Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Kenithi. I'm glad that you're with me today. Um, well, welcome to another Friday Sews. I did not film last week Friday Sews because, did I, no, didn't film last week because we had just started back school. Um, I do work for the school system over here and I go to school full time online for myself and I work a part time job. So I was getting, get, getting adjusted to my schedule, my new schedule for this week. So that's why I haven't been on youtube like that however i did manage to sew three garments for my youngest daughter but i only have two to show you because one of them she wore this week to school but they are all alike just different fabrics um i have a fabric haul for you all and i also want to share with you um i believe it was two fridays ago um the hashtag question was how do i store my fabric and then the other one was how do i store my patterns so I'm going to be showing both of those, sharing both of those with you today. I'm going to be showing pictures, well, a video, in a video how I store my fabrics and my patterns also. Also, I will link in the description box what I'm wearing. This is a, um, I know it's a simplicity, I want to say 8982 or something down that line. But anyway, I'll link it in the description box. And uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing is first. The two garments that I did manage to sew up this week, but three garments that I managed to sew up last weekend was just some simple, um, I believe they're called jumper dresses. And they're from way back in the day, dresses. And the pattern I got from Jordan Fabrics about two or three years ago. And I've been using this um, pattern for my daughter ever since then. But here's one of the jumper dresses. It's very pretty. It's a blind bodice and it has buttons, if you can see it. It has buttons going down the middle and here's the back of it and it's just a, it's a simple sleeveless jumper dress and i like these dresses because she can wear a short sleeve shirt up under it or a long sleeve shirt up under it and she can wear it throughout the whole year my daughter is very small frame she's six years old but she's um like 40 some pounds she might be fitting in but it's all in height like she's her waist is itty bitty like an itty bitty waist so i like to make her clothes because um, when I buy clothes at her store, they will either fit too big and be too short or um, fit right and it would be too um, too short. So I like to make her dresses. But this is the first dress that I made and it's very pretty. Um, put it over there. The second dress that I made was this one right here. And I didn't use any new fabrics. I just used something that was in my stash that I can um, coordinate together. And this one right here, added on a border print to it. Now, the story with these two fabrics right here, they were actually skirts that I made when I first started sewing. But as I got better, I decided I didn't want those. Better in my sewing, I decided I did not want those skirts anymore. So I recycled them to making dresses for my daughter and she loved both of them. I mean, they are very pretty. This one has some pretty buttons that I got on um, AliExpress a few years back. I haven't put the label in them yet, but I will be doing that hopefully this weekend while I have a three-day weekend off work. The next thing I'm going to share with you is how I store my patterns. So I store my patterns now in these containers right here. And I got these containers from Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree just started um, selling these about uh, when they switched over from Dollar Tree to, I don't know what the heck you call them now. Because everything it is, is not a dollar and twenty-five. It's not a dollar. Some of it's five dollars, six, seven, or eight dollars. So, but they still have the name of Dollar Tree. I'm guessing it should be a Dollar Tree Plus. But um, this is how I store my patterns in the clear plastic containers. Like this container right here has my tops and the skirts. Like say if it's a combination of top and skirt, it has those patterns in here as well as just top patterns in here. And the other one that I have is dress patterns. And I will have two that have dress patterns and one that have coats because that's all we wear. We only wear dresses and our skirts and of course tops. I don't make pants or tra trousers or shorts or capris or anything like that. We just don't wear it. There's nothing wrong with it. We just don't wear it. But that's how we store our patterns. And I'm going to turn the camera around now so you can see how I store my fabric. I'm going to turn it slow so you can see all of my fabric. You see in this corner right here that's a basket full of fabric that I thrifted not too long ago 
Um, a lady had like a box of fabric and she showed, um, sold it to me for like $20 and I just went through it and I picked out all the fabric that was pretty good. Some of this upholstery fabric like that. And then you have some other ones like furniture fabric that I've been making like handbags out of. And the fabric that's on top right there is all double brush poly fabric. But that's for the spring that I did not get to so hopefully I will get to it next spring. And then you will see all the fabrics that I have here in this section. Like this fabric right here. It's a mix of quilting cotton and a mix of cotton sateen that I got from Fabric Mark Fabrics. This is another double brush poly or um, rayon spandex fabric or liver, Liverpool fabric right here. And then I have some more double brush poly. I have some denim fabric and a bunch of other fabrics that I'm just not going to go all the way through. I have a, quite a nice fabric stash that I keep with me. And uh, yeah. And it goes, I have, these are two cube shelves, by the way. There are, if you see from here, there, that's the first one. And then here's the second one. And I tried to keep it where I had all the winter and fall fabrics here. And then I have all the spring and summer here. But that's not the case because my winter and, fab, my winter and fall fabrics are quite thicker than the spring and summer. So that has pretty much been overtaken. Yeah, and so I have head start storage some fabric here but this is the overall how I store my fabrics if you would like to excuse me if you'd like for me to go through do a video one day to show you all the fabrics that I have then I do not mind doing that matter of fact I have a I'm turning the camera back around but I have a fabric order from Oglas closet that I just placed yesterday that's going to be here sometime next week so I am going to be doing another fabric haul video but I did go to Hobby Lobby yesterday. I went there particularly looking for a quarter of fabric that they have. And it's called the patchwork fall fabric that they have. And they didn't have it. However, they had the second one that I wanted. And I went there to pick, I had them to hold it for me. And I went there and picked it up after I got off work. But while I was there, I allowed both of my daughters to pick up two fabrics that they want me to um, sew into a garment for the fall seasons. And let me go ahead and show you that. My daughter picked up my youngest one. Obviously, you can tell this is hers. But she picked up this Minnie Mouse quilting cotton fabric. Even though they call it a pair of fabric. But she picked this up. So we're going to make her a dress out of this. Alright, they're very pretty. And then my, she got this fabric right here with the owls up there. And both of them she said she wanted dresses out of. So these are her fabrics. And then the youngest one got another quilting cotton. Even though it was in this section as apparel. But she has this fabric, and I'm not sure what she wants out of it. I don't know if it's going to be a um, shirt dress or a skirt, um, but somewhere down that line. But she, I have four yards of this. And for the youngest, I end up getting two yards each, even though I know she don't need two yards. I could have probably did one and a half, but two yards for the youngest. And I have four yards out of this because we're not sure what we're going to make. And then she also picked up this, um, what is the name of it? It's not... Is it flannel? It feels like it feels like a tight flannel, like a brushed flannel. I want to say it is flannel, but I think it's a flannel plaid fabric. But she picked this up and it's very pretty. And I know she's gonna get a shirt dress, a button-down shirt dress with this with a waist tie. And I do have the pattern already in mind for it in my stash. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do for her with that one. And then we have, this is what I went to pick up, this corduroy fabric right here. And I believe I got three and a half yards of it. No, I got four yards of this corduroy fabric right here. It's not wide. That's the only thing I don't like about shopping at Hobby Lobby. That fabric is on like 44, 45 inches wide. And normally, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes you can get it online for 55 inches. But, um... Anyway, I picked up four yards of this. Now, I'm going to make the pinafore dress by, um, what is the lady name? Jennifer, is it Jennifer Handmade? Jennifer something handmade. Because she does the gable top. Also, Jennifer Lauren Handmade. Anyway, I'm going to put her name in the description box. But anyway, I have the pinafore dress 
pattern already that I've had for a few months. And I'm going to make a pinafore dress out of this. And it's the loose fitting one. And if I can find it, I will link it in the description box. Or during the next video for my sewing plans for this month, I will show you what um, the pattern is. And speaking of sewing plans, I did not do a sewing plan catch up from August. Matter of fact, I did never hit or reach my goal for um, any of the sewing plans that I had in August. I think I just sewed the two garments and the three dresses that I had for my door. But that was it. I still have a dress hanging on my door that needs to be... Um, I need to sew up. She has another dress that was in my August sewing plans. My oldest one have a dress and a top that was in my sewing plans. And I had another dress that was in my sewing plans. I want to say two dresses that was in my sewing plans. I know one was a vintage pattern. And it had the cape up here on the neckline. If you go back to the first video, see. I know I'm not going to sew that one up because it's getting, it's not getting colder. But um, we're getting into the fall season. So I don't want to sew anything summerish while we get into the fall season because my wardrobe is lacking things for cold weather. So I'm going to be focusing on the skirt pattern that I was supposed to sew as, long, as well as the um, dress patterns for both of my daughters and the dress I have hanging on my door. They've been hanging on my door forever because I just haven't finished it. And it's a, the dress itself is constructed, but I haven't done the sleeves. So when I do the next video, the week coming up, like I'm going to finish it this weekend because we have Saturday, Sunday off work and monday so i'm going to finish this weekend when the next video comes i'm going to show you that dress that i'm going to finish and hopefully i can get finished at least three or four more projects um this weekend but yeah that's what happened to the sewing plants in august so hopefully this hopefully this month i can get back on track but like i said i have a lot on my plate right now working full time working part time going to school full time my plate is completely full, so I'm just getting sewn in when I can. And like this weekend is a perfect weekend because we have a three-day weekend. Okay, so the next fabric is a corduroy fabric again. And I just love this fabric. My youngest daughter was like, ew, pink. Yeah, pink. I love this pink fabric and I'm going to wear it. And it this will probably be another pinafore dress, like the um Jennifer Lauren handmade. I believe that's the name, you guys. But she has a pinafore dress, it's like a swing one. And I want to make a plain one and a print one. So, yes, I'm going to use both of those fabrics for a pinafore dress. Now, I did pick up this. This is a Baptiste. And I got this, just a plain Baptiste, because then to line it with this. And I thought that would go good together. Now, this one right here, I have not found a lining for it. Because being it's a plain on the outside, I want a nice print on the inside. And I will probably go with something um, when I do a fabric haul from fabric.com. I will see if I can find something to coordinate with this. And I'm just looking at my stash to see if I have anything. And I might. I might have something. Or maybe not. But anyway, if I don't, I will do a fabric haul and see what I can get to go to coordinate with this. with line with Because I want to be... This is very pretty on the outside. So I want something just as pretty on the inside it'd be nice if i can get a piece of um liberty fabrics um fabric that would go with this one of their their cotton ones the thinner ones to go line with this dress right here that would be very nice but we'll see they're kind of expensive so we'll see and then i did get started on the pinafore dress if you can remember for my daughter got started with that one i just haven't finished it as I got was doing this part right here, the bit part that is completed almost. I just have I decided to do ruffles on it, so I have the ruffling part completed. I just have to put the gathers in and then put it attach it to this. And the skirt part is simple, you just have a two rectangle piece, pieces, and then you have a front waistband and a back waistband. Your back waistband is what have the elastic, so that's pretty simple to make. But I know I'm going to have this made up more than likely it would be finished by sunday yeah so i'm excited about her wearing this definitely want to get her um let me make sure she get a good wear out of this before she grow too taller yep and that's about it uh, i'm not gonna say what i'm gonna sew this month because i don't know because life has taken a different direction than what i planned it to 
So I'm just going to take it one weekend at a time. I know I'm not going to be sewing on the weekdays like that because that's when um, not only am I working, but I'm doing all my coursework. I have four courses, courses that I'm taking this semester. So I'm doing all my coursework throughout the week too. And then when I get home, I try to have that time to relax and uh, spend just a little time with my, my kids when I can. And of course, spend some time with the Lord. Now, last week, I did end my video off with saying if you have a prayer request, you can leave it in the comment box and nobody left a prayer request. So this week, I am going to just leave you with a, a thought, a thought, and a little bit of testimony too. So, um, upon the week I started, um, before I went back to school, I had a lot of anxiety. I was worried. I was like, Lord, how I'm going to work full time, part time, go to school full time. And all these emotions start just pouring into me, which kind of made me anxious. But at the same time, I was worried, couldn't get no rest like I, I needed and um, the Lord, I talked to the Lord one night, just poured out my heart to him. I said, Lord, I just don't have the strength to work six days a week and just have a rest day on Sunday, which is a partial rest day because I do go to church on Sunday. And I was like, Lord, how am I supposed to do all of this? And then he reminded me that we can't do anything without his strength. It is his strength. It is his grace. It is his mercy that keep us going day by day. And without his strength, without his grace, without his mercy, we can't accomplish anything. And one thing that he had taught me, if I put him first, if I wake up and put him first in the morning, when I wake up and put him first in the morning, which means pray to him, give him thanks for another day, spend a little devotional time with him, he will work out everything throughout my day. And let me tell you, it has been exactly that this week. He has worked everything out this week by me spending time with him in the morning. Yes, when I get up, I am tired. When I go to bed, I'm tired. When I get up, I'm tired. But the Lord reminds me, I have to have that quality time with him in order to have the strength that I need to go by to get through my day. And I thank God for that because this week has not been the best week, but I made it through the week. For example, today, my car would not start on me twice. I had to get somebody to jump my car. But was I worried? Absolutely not. I wasn't worried. Why? Because I knew God was going to take care of me. Not only that, I mean, it could be worse. Somebody is going through something worse than their car won't start. I had to go spend $250 on a battery. But you know what? Thank God that I had the money to spend on a battery. It's it's things like it's little things like that that we take for granted that we don't that we don't talk to God about. Like, well, God, we don't hear about our problems with our car and things like that. Yes, He do. He's concerned about all of that. If you break a fingernail, he's concerned about that. If you lose a strand of hair, he's concerned about that. So my advice and my encouragement to you is whatever the day throws at you, whatever the week throw at you, whatever you have to face tomorrow, face it knowing that the strength does not, the, the, excuse me, that the strength does not lie in you, but it lies in the Lord. Our strength comes from him. We can't make it without him. So no matter what you're going through, trust God to strengthen you for the course. Trust God to strengthen you for the test, the trial, the tribulation, or whatever you have to go through. Because that's how you're going to make it. If you take your attention and your focus off God, and you put your attention and your focus on your circumstances, you're not going to go far. You have to be able to see beyond what you see right here, beyond what we are seeing right now. You have to be able to see beyond that. And know that all things work together for the good to those that love God who are called according to his purpose. Remember that God loves you. And if you love him and if you are called according to his purpose, he's going to take care of you. So you don't have anything to worry about. So that is my encouragement for you today. That was encouragement the Lord gave me. And I am comfort, comforted in knowing that God cares for me. And if you heard it noise in the background, it's my six-year-old daughter. You're going to hear that a lot. You know, she gets home and she's excited. But continue to pray for me. And I'm going to continue praying for you. And remember, if you have a prayer request, please reach out to me. I will leave my email in the description box. Or you can leave it, um, your prayer request in the comment box. Don't be ashamed because we all need prayer right now. And until next week, I'm going to post a video next week. 
on Tuesday. So until next week, be blessed and I love you and God loves you and take care. Bye.